Hello and welcome to Weathered Oak Media. I'm Will and I hope you're all doing well out there today. Thank you for joining me for episode 3 of my capstone video series, Working Class Creator. In episode 2, I showed you how to use the most basic tools in Adobe Illustrator to create an event poster like this one. And in this episode, we're going to jump into Adobe InDesign, and I'll show you how easy it is to create an eye-catching magazine cover like this one. I also want to show you a couple of my previous year's magazine covers and the key differences between them, as well as some of my favorite magazine covers from history. I guess you could say we've got a lot to cover. <laughs> anyway, we do have a lot to talk about and only a short time to do it, so let me roll that intro and we'll get right to it. Welcome back. Once again, I'm Will. So despite having access to all of the world's information in the palms of our hands, you have to admit that sometimes it is actually kind of nice to just disconnect and pick up a book or at the very least a magazine. There's something about the feeling of the paper and the smell of the ink. You can lose yourself in the bold text and the advertisement and the photos. There's just something tangible about a magazine that uh, you just can't get with your device. And that's the reason why they're still on newsstands today. And what is it that draws us to magazines more than anything else? Well, it's their covers, of course. See, despite our parents telling us not to, we as humans do have a tendency to judge things by their covers. And publishers are well aware of this, and that's why they do everything they can to make sure that their magazine covers really stand out. Now what you put on your magazine cover can really vary a lot depending on how much you want to show your readers off the bat. You can throw up a huge wall of text with uh, every headline for every story in your magazine. Or you can let the photo do most of the talking so that you don't have to. No matter what you're doing with your magazine, the most important thing I'll tell you, just like I did in episode two, is that in order to really streamline your workflow, you need to plan ahead. Oh, whoops. Hang on. Hang on. There we go. All right, plan ahead. Because if you don't plan ahead, unfortunate things like that might happen. So before we dig into the travel magazine that I've created for this video, I'd like to take a second here to show you a couple of examples from previous years that I'm not resubmitting, I'm only just simply showing as a demonstration of two different approaches you can take with magazine covers. In my first year, I created this magazine cover, uh, and I got to live out a little bit of a teenage fantasy in the, uh, by doing so. Uh, my wife took the photo, I did all the editing, and I let the typography do most of the work here. And last year I created this magazine cover with a collage of household things, and I printed the name of the magazine on little strips of paper. Then I used top-down photography, neatly arranged. The challenge there was that those little pieces of paper had to be scaled just right so that the text wouldn't lose focus when I blew up the cover. It was a gamble, but it paid off. So those are two radically different approaches to magazine covers, and for this one, for this video, and for time, we've decided to keep this one a little more simple. Why don't we dive into Adobe InDesign, and I'll show you how I did it. Now we're going to start a new file, and uh, 8 and a half by 11, just like before. Uh, vertical orientation, 12 columns, 0.167 gutters. We'll leave everything else as it is, and you can't see it on the screen, but create is down there at the bottom. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make it look like this. So we want to put in that background photo first. So we go File, and then Place. This should be familiar if you remember the poster. Go to the image file wherever you keep the images that you want to use here. Hit Open. And I don't know what that little wiggle was there on the screen, but that's pretty funny. And we'll drag that into place just like we did with the rectangle. We're just going to make sure we just nudge that right in so everything fits nicely. Check all your edges. Looks great. Take a dog, nice close look at those edges. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna lock that just like we did before and you'll see a little padlock icon there. Now comes the text and this might get a little repetitive but we're gonna do the same thing for every block of text but there are a few differences with each section. First is your masthead. This is the big, this is the title of your magazine. So we're gonna draw out a big text box right here. And with that text box selected, we're gonna go over here uh, and we're just going to change the fill to a white color so that we could see our text. I think they call it paper here. 
yeah, paper. And we don't have, need any stroke or anything like that. We'll type in the title of our magazine. We're going to call it Go Travel. And use the selector tool. We can do everything like center it and we can pick our fonts. And again, just like before, there's a whole bunch of fonts to choose from. I like this one called Veneer. We're going to bump that up to 160 points. Stretch that out so we, that we can see it. Tighten up the box. And again, be careful not to warp your text or distort your text. And we're just going to drag that to the middle and use those guidelines there to help you line it up. And if you're really not certain, what you can do is you can go over here, click on one of your rulers and drag a line, a guideline, right up there to the half inch mark. And do another one right over there to the eight inch mark. Oh, look at that. I nailed it. Well, not quite. We can actually nudge it over just a little bit with the arrow keys. There we go. That looks pretty good. We're going to lower that down a little bit so that we've got some room to put the volume and issue up top. We'll add a little special effect over here with the drop shadow. Dial that down to about 50%. Use global light. And hit OK. And there we go. And that kind of lifts the go travel right off the page. And it's kind of consistent with the poster I made back in uh, episode 2. Next comes the word magazine. This is the, uh, they call this the magazine deck. It's the line that goes right underneath the title of the magazine and it says what kind of publication it is. In this case, I'm going to pick a different font. I kind of like this one, Savito Pro, and we're going to stick it at about um, 48 points. That looks good. We'll type out magazine there. And again, just like before, we're going to tighten up the box here. There we go. And let's tuck that in right there, line that up with the uh, guideline there. Might have to nudge it over a little bit. Might have maybe a little bit of fine tuning here. Might just take a little bit of a second. Sometimes my screen glitches as I'm recording this, so yeah. Here we go. Perfect. Right in line there. I like it. Looks good. Next comes your issue, volume, that kind of stuff. And we're going to fill this with a yellow color instead. We want to make sure it gets that yellow. Just for that little bit of pop of color. Same text as before, but this time we're going to go with semi-bold. And we're going to stick it at about 15 points or so. Volume 1. Issue 1. Summer 2023. Great. Now again... Tighten up the box around it, being careful not to warp your text. And let's drag that in here. Now, uh, you could have it lined up over here with the end of the L, like it is down below. But I actually kind of want to nudge it over a little bit and line it up with the top of the L right here. To me, I think that looks a little better. Yeah, I like that. And turn off the grid lines by hitting Control or Command and your semicolon key. And let's just keep going here. Next is going to come the big headline title. This is the lead article of our magazine. This is what the main thing that is supposed to draw people in here besides this cover shot. By the way, that's my photo. I took that in Mexico at the place that I'm just about to write here. Now I found a font here called Carta Marina. We're going to make it bold. And let's bump that up to... Well, let's bump that up to about 88 there. The word Barcello, that's actually a real place. Barcello Resorts, and this is in the Mayan Riviera. Let's highlight that O, just that O right there. Go up to Type, and you want to type on uh, Glyphs. You want Glyphs here, and you want that O with the little accent over it, because it's a Spanish word, Barcello, or it might be Italian, I'm not sure. Anyways, you want that accent word. Now we're just going to hit the Select tool so that we can frame it up properly. There we go. And let's drag this over right on that waterline, right about there. Might have to fine tune it a little bit. Again, use your guidelines. Let's add a drop shadow to it to give it a little bit of lift. Same as before, 50%. And use global light. Okay. There we go. That pops up quite nicely. I like that. Now we need the lead article line. I'm not sure what this part is actually called. Um, I'll put a caption up when I figure it out after I record this. But uh, we want to tell people what's so interesting about the Barcello. So we're going to draw out another text line here. And for this, we want to use a more neutral font. First of all, we'll go with paper color, the white color. 
We want something more neutral, so I'm just going to go with Railway, Medium. And we'll go with about 18 points. It's just a nice neutral font. Exploring the brand new adults only Maya Riviera Resort Complex. This is a real place, by the way. Like I said, this is where I took this picture from, so this is all my own content here. And we'll line that up right here. Let's zoom in a little bit. And we gotta make it so that the benches or the chairs there are not too, too distracting. So we'll have to play around with this a little bit, but we'll, we'll make it work. We'll make it pop. Maybe we'll just go up to bold. That's a little bit better. And you can also adjust the distance between the lines there over there on the right. And take your time, fine tune this, make sure it works for you. I can read that, I hope other people can. Yeah, let's just fine tune it a little bit more. Bump it up just a little bit right there. All of this is subjective. Whatever your magazine cover is all about, it's entirely up to you how you want to place this. But I think this works for this particular project. All right, next we're going to do the word plus, and these are going to be our supplementary articles. Or the supporting articles, I think they call them. We'll use the same San Vito Pro font as up above where it says magazine. We'll use bold this time. We'll center it in that little block. And we'll drag that down right about there for now. We probably will have to move it, but just down there for now is good enough. Finally, we need our supporting articles list. Uh, so I just came up with a few arbitrary articles. And again, we're going to use the same railway font as up above. And we'll go with uh, about a 20, how about a 28 point? 28 should work. So how about tips for traveling light? Enter. And maybe tour bus etiquette? Might have spelled that wrong there. We'll, we'll check that later. And how to beat the crowds. That looks pretty good. Hit the selection tool and let's go with semi bold actually. And then over here we can adjust the line height to give it a little sp space in there. Tighten up the box. I know this is getting repetitive, but this is how it is. Bring up our grid lines, zoom in a little bit, make sure everything lines up with that margin line, the pink line there at the bottom. You could use your arrow keys to nudge this around. Perfect. Let's take plus and center it right above it. Notice the little green line that came up when you were moving it. There we go. That's looking really good. I like that. So next up here, we're going to grab the barcode. And I've got that saved in my capstone file somewhere in here. There it is. I created this barcode in Adobe Illustrator. And if you don't have one, I'm sure you can find a, a mock-up on uh, anywhere online. And we're going to drag that down into place. I'm just using the arrow keys to nudge this around. We're going to line that up right with that bottom margin. One more thing is I need my logo. This is published by Weathered Oak Media, so I'm just going to go into my images file, find the one I'm looking for. There it is. And we're just going to drag that same box over there, just like we just did. And we'll just have to fine tune it a little bit. There we go. Just kind of nudge it around a little bit. Perfect. I like that. Everything's lined up nicely. I think that's actually looking pretty good. A pretty realistic travel magazine for a mock-up. We're going to want to save our work. Save it where you like. Name it what you like. I'm going to call it Go Travel. Oops. Go Travel. Can I type today? Magazine. Oops. Go Travel Magazine. Oh, go Travel Mag. Good enough. All right. And now the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check your spelling. Now I knew it was going to pick up the word Barcello. It's a real place, but it's, since it's, a, it's another word, we're going to skip that. But I, oh, I did spell a word wrong there, so we're going to change that. And there you go. And that's the importance of spelling, spell checker. Okay, next, what we're going to want to do here is something called package. And what this does is it bundles up all the fonts and everything else that's included in this, all your images into one nice, neat little package. So if you wanted to hand this off to another collaborator, they'll have everything right there. 
Finally, just like we did with the um, with the poster, we're gonna wanna create outlines for our text. So you go up to type, create outlines. And again, this is so that people on other machines can view this without having to download the fonts. Now don't worry about those funny blue lines around there. They'll go away when we export this. And now I guess it is time to export it, isn't it? So there's a couple different ways we can do this, but we're just gonna go export just like this. Actually, this is the way you do this. If you wanted, you could put on all the printer's marks and the bleeds and all that, but we're not gonna worry about that. Let's just export it. There it is as a PDF. That is a pretty cool looking magazine cover. I would read that. So as you've seen here in this little crash course, even just using the most basic tools in Adobe InDesign can give you a really gorgeous magazine cover like this one, or whatever your project was. Again, the goal wasn't to have you guys recreate exactly what I'm doing here, but just to know where the tools are and how to use them to create your own project and, you know, maybe get you out of a jam. In the next episode, we're gonna jump into Adobe Premiere Pro and we're gonna do a fun little video editing project. I can't wait for this one. I've kind of saved the best for last here. So look forward to that. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, please drop them down below. Uh, if you like what you've seen, please hit that like and subscribe button and then hit that notification bell so that you know when the next video pops up. Until then, please take care of yourselves and each other and I do hope to see you again sometime.